Today we're gonna talk about the history of Naturalis. And actually, we need your help. This is Naturalis Newsroom. Here at Naturalis Biodiversity Center, we have a collection of 42 million specimens, but only a dozen of curators. These experts take care of our precious collection, and believe me, they're awesome people. My guest today is an American science communicator who writes for magazines like National Geographic, Wired and Huffington Post. This fall, her book on jellyfish will be published, and she's now here in Leiden to work on her next project. A project in which Naturalis plays an important role. I present Julie Berwald. Hi Julie. Hi. What has Naturalis got to do with your new project? So I'm very interested in one of the curators who worked at the Naturalis. He was Jewish, so he was actually um, forbidden to work during World War II. And um, the cool thing is he still managed to publish about 25 papers while he was in hiding. Oh. And his name is Gustav Stiasny. He was a curator of invertebrates and he worked a lot on jellyfish. Unfortunately, the death rate in the Netherlands was much higher than other countries. And probably only 25% of the Jews in hiding survived. So how did Stiesny survive? And that's the big question. I don't think we exactly know. There's some writing that suggests he hid in the archives themselves. There were um, big, huge drawers that a man could fit inside. And there's some stories that some of the curators hid in the drawers when the Nazis came to try to find people. I would love to, to find out more about how he, he did survive. So they were actually hiding in the natural history collection? That's what I've heard, and it's only from, you know, secondhand at this point. So I would love to find out more about that. Why do you think there was a story in Styasny? I think the fact that somebody um, who was Jewish and was being told by the authorities that this character is a reason why you can't continue doing your job, in fact you might not even qualify as being human, must have been in great tension with the work that he did as a scientist, which was taking the characters of animals, the things that made them so unique, and and then classifying them uh, according to their species. He was a great taxonomist. So um, this idea of what a character can do, how it can be used for very negative things, but also very positive things, um, is really interesting to me. You can write about anything. So why did you choose the Dutch Natural History Collection Manager? Um, I'm Jewish also, and my, uh, my grandparents also survived the Holocaust, but they lost their entire family. So I think when I found a biologist, a jellyfish biologist, who had gone through something similar to my family, there was a resonance with me and I, I felt like I wanted to help tell that story. You also met with his granddaughter. So what did she think about you studying her grandfather? She is being incredibly gracious about it. It turns out that um, she's the very last diasny, so she doesn't have this information to leave to any children. And um, she's, she said she's also not used to talking about her family very much. Um, so it's different for her, but she's being incredibly gracious and sharing her stories with me. Can you use the help of the Dutch public for your new project? That would be fabulous. I would love any information people could give about the Stiasnys during the war. If anyone knew the Stiasny family during World War II or after World War II, I would love to have any information. And if there's just general information about how the Jews in Leiden survived the war, that would be fascinating for me as well. And go ahead and get in touch with me or the Naturalis uh, if you do have information. Thank you very much. You're very welcome. <laughs> Below the video you can find a list with all Stiasny's publications. And if you want to meet one of our current curators, check out the first Newsroom episode with Pepijn Kamminga. This was Naturalis Newsroom and we will be back with more discoveries.